Today is August 29th, 2024 to 6 p.m. Uh, can I have everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. So everybody is aware we're recording the meeting, meeting via WCAT6, which is our local access network, uh, via Zoom, and also streaming on Facebook. If anybody else is recording, please let us know so we can inform the rest of the public. Okay. So first thing on the agenda is the fire chief. Fire recording in progress. For July. Everyone, Good 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 uh, the meeting. Uh, six investigations, five legal burns, and one landing zone setup. I responded to 84 medical calls in uh, July 23, less than interception required for those calls. Uh, we did uh, a few inspections, three smoke and seal inspections, which are the inspections we do on property sales and transfers, uh, two propane tank inspections, uh, two solar battery storage permits, uh, and inspections. Uh, in terms of our activities and meetings, uh, warn EMS all the training on behavioral and mental health emergency response and protocols, and warn fire and EMS uh, had in-house training uh, by UMass Life Flight. Uh, we had Life Flight come out and they did a uh, classroom portion, a live practical portion uh, for all of our members, which was a uh, really well-received uh, uh, training. Uh, the FY, in terms of budgetary things, FY20 budget has been established. I'm going to continue to monitor all of the line items uh, very closely as we go through this, and I'll keep the board and the time administrator aware of any issues. Thank you very much, Chief. Do you have any questions? Do you have anything? No. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is uh, the acceptance of fiscal year 2023 assistance to firefighters federal grant. Uh, so this is a, a very exciting opportunity for the town. Uh, so the assistance to firefighter grant is something that's been around for several years, uh, many years now. Um, it is a grant that we can apply to uh, for, uh, as a fire department through FEMA. Uh, it's a federal award grant. Uh, we've been lucky. This is our second award in the last three years, uh, which is not that heard of. It's, 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 it's a very tough and very competitive grant. So this is a this is a great thing. We when we got to the last town meeting, uh, the town put one hundred and ten thousand dollars towards our holds appliances, and uh, I told the town at the time that we applied for this grant, and we were fortunate enough to receive funding for this grant. So uh, they, we, we we were funded for one hundred and two thousand dollars out of that. Um, so we we're going to be able to turn back quite a bit of that money to the townspeople once we finish that project out and get everything we need. So vast majority of that equipment, which will replace all of the holes, including our supply holes, our attack holes, our appliances on the trucks, all the trucks in the department will be replaced with this project. So the vast majority will be done with grant funding, and we'll be able to turn that money back to the, to the taxpayers, which is pretty exciting. You know, right now, I think about 20, 20, 25 towns in the state of Massachusetts have been awarded. Uh, so that's a very small amount, of, you know, considering there's 300 plus fire departments out there. So uh, we got this award when we got Brush truck or engine four was partially paid for back in 2021 on the same program. So this is uh, something that we always try to apply for if we can. And, you know, it's a you never know if the dice is going to roll your way, but this time it did. And, uh, we can turn that money, a lot of that money, back to the townspeople. So that's great. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's great. Yes, sir. I will just say that uh, congratulations, Adam. I know you worked very hard on this um, grant. I did receive a call from Senator Markey's office uh, uh, when we uh, got the award, and I, I, I talked to the chief about it. Um, Senator Markey was, was, was very helpful in, in, in securing this for the town. Thank you. Yep. 
Thank you. Um, anything else, Chief? No. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is acknowledgement of the resignation of full-time firefighter and EMT Allie Smith. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, you know, one of my full-time staff is needing to enter into a uh, whole, totally different profession, um, you know, at this point. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, she may be saying it's called firefighter EMT, but, uh, you know, she feels that moving in a direction for a, a different profession that she's had some interest in in a very long time. Uh, she's an artist, a professional artist, and a tattoo artist, and a, and a painter and everything. And she's kind of going into that, that whole realm and feels it's just a better fit for her. So. Uh, we do have a job posting out there uh, that will be posted through next week, and we hope to find uh, a, a good applicant that we can put into that position within the next month or so, and hopefully get back to full staff as quickly as possible. So, hopefully we can retain her as a call firefighter, the, the EMT, and she can still help us out. That's certainly her choice, and uh, I'm sure she'll be making that choice soon, but, uh, you know, I, I give her a lot of credit, you know, I mean, for pursuing her dreams as an artist and everything. Sad to lose her. Yep. She's doing a great yeah, job. She's a great person. Great person. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mrs. Dusty, did you want to? You had an experience? Did you want to say anything? Oh, I did. Thank you for reminding me. Um, well, man, a week and a half ago, I was up helping um, a person at um, Salem Cross Inn. And a person drove in and came running, uh, someone else came running into the building yelling that they were doing CPR out in the, out in the parking lot. And there was a um, on-call EMS person with me and she ran out and started doing CPR. And I went over to the wife to get a little bit more background from him. And it was interesting that West Brookfield EMS was there and their ambulance was there and they were working on the guy, but the, but ours showed up. And to watch Adam and Haley and um, Sean all go to action on this person was impressive. It was amazing. And I was so proud to be part of the Warren family to have these guys show up and Adam showed up and um, they put on the machine that we purchased. Um, and it was just, I was just really impressed. And I just want to let the townspeople know that we don't worry if you're having a heart attack or anything. These guys will take care of you to the best of their ability. And it was amazing to see. Thank you. Good job, Chief, you and your crew. Next thing on the agenda, review and discuss a request from Police Chief and Patrolman's Union to appoint Mr. John B. Bell as a full-time police officer at Step 6 and to grant him access to a two weeks paid vacation upon starting. Anticipated vote. Chief, how are you doing tonight? Thank you for seeing me. Um, I'm actually excited to bring Officer Bell, I've known Officer Bell since he started in Westbrook Field in 2015. Um, we're very lucky he applied. When I heard that he applied, I was excited. Uh, he was, he called seven people for interviews. He showed up. <laughs> <laughs> One out of seven, so we were good. Um, it's a pretty good ratio. <laughs> right? But John, John's local. He's academy trained. We don't have to train him. Um, he also has a DE school. Uh, operation of the evidence room and sexual assault investigator for everyone to correct it. Um, you know what we're getting an officer, like I said, in more than three years, did a great job. Um, and some numerous calls over here for us in Warren. Um, so all the department members, as you can see in the union, wrote a letter. All the department members the that came to me and wanted me to bring John here when, when they heard he applied. Uh, family man, wife, daughter. And even with this offer, he's, take, he's coming here to, and taking a pay cut and also giving back four weeks of vacation, even four weeks of vacation. It seems uh, kind of crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, hey. Don't talk about it. No, I'm not talking about it. But he, we when, I came, when I talked to him, he, he We'll treat you good here. over here. We interviewed him. He did very well. I, I, I really do like um, being at the top right next door. I like the direction that 
you guys have taken this town, um, especially Keith Mullet. He's done a great job with the department turning it around. So I, I like what I've seen out of the town itself, and I think there's a lot of uh, potential and a lot of plans in the work. So I'd like to be a part of it. Big things coming. <laughs> Floods right into us, so which is which is great. And that's all the guys. So we be a great fit. So that's why I bring in that's why the offer was <laughs> If you didn't apply and we had to put someone in the academy, you're talking $78,000 over the process. And we don't know when we're getting that person to find the academy. We don't even know if you graduate. We don't know if they're going to graduate. And then we got to start the process all over again if they don't. Exactly. Okay. Um, okay, anything else, too? Uh, we're going to give him a chance. <laughs> oh, there is one name. He's a Yankees fan. Well, we don't even have to go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what? What? Well, we have two open spots wow. in town now. Wow. 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 We can't welcome you as Officer Bell yet, but no. we have well, to make it official. But if we do, um, but you know, can you tell anything about yourself to us? Sure. Can briefly, uh, as Chief Mullet said, um, the most important thing about me is I got a daughter. She's seven. Uh, they're not here right now because she does competitive dance at seven, so that's five days a week. I am not that yet. Um, I got in the job uh, a little while back. Um, Always wanted to do it, wanted to pursue it. Spent a lot of time in West Brookfield uh, under Chief O'Donnell, town resident. Uh, learned a lot from him. Great guy to work for. Uh, the town of West Brookfield itself is just in a direction that I don't, I don't see myself being a part of. Um, it's kind of stagnant, uh, to be completely honest. Um, when I'm out of work, I like to go off, uh, fish a little bit. Just pretty basic home life. When I'm home, I like to be home. Uh, I got a camper in Brookfield, so it's between Barry and Brookfield. So. Again, to reiterate, I really like what I've seen from the town. I really like the group of guys that I work for, Chief Moore. Um, Lieutenant Whitcomb, I've worked with prior when he was aware. Um, I really like what, what your town has put forward, and I like to see the progress that you have made in the town that I've uh, been a neighboring police officer. So, uh, if there's anything I left out, I'd be more than happy to answer. I think it's a great to the town administrator for the citizens that have supported us in the past year. As, as he said, our department could be more and you guys also are. So um, to have somebody of that quality that wants to come over, that's quite a you know, Absolutely. There, back in the day, we couldn't keep anybody. Exactly. Now it's like grabbing up from other towns. Yeah, We're not getting them grabbed from, grabbed from us anymore, which is nice. So not going to work. <laughs> At least I hope we don't have anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, welcome. Uh, thank you for applying with the town. And, you know, it's always great to have people like your caliber and, you know, experience coming over here and helping out. We are in a big, big, pretty good direction for the, the police department, fire department. We all support you. You know, we're always there trying to give you anything you guys need to so you can do the best of your job. Um, we don't want to fail you. And that's our job, is to make sure that you can do the best thing you can do and succeed. So, you, know, you ever need anything? Well, after we go. But if yeah, you ever yeah. need anything, we're always here. Just asking, the Chief's a great man. You know? So, with that said, you want to make a motion? Or do you want to discuss? Surprise. I mean, Jim submitted a letter, so a memo. I, I seen, and um, just knowing the experience, how hard it is to hire a police officer, especially an experienced police officer, I think we would actually be losing money in the town to try to hire somebody that doesn't have experience, send them to the academy, pay for them to be there, and then... You don't know what you're getting. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting, and mm -hmm. if they resign or get the academy and then jump to another town. We just wasted all that time and money training somebody just to leave our town. Yeah. 
and here we got a local guy that's experienced. I, that we know. The union came out of the woodwork to vouch for him, um, and he does have a lot of experience, and that matters for stuff. Um, you know, my, I, I think it's very reasonable, and I know we're going to have to make some adjustments. The union wants to make some adjustments to the collective so we have bargain to open agreement. Up the contract. The right. collective bargain agreement to that. So, so how? Why did, are you losing? You're losing four weeks vacation. You've been in West Brookfield that long. Yeah. So when I started with West Brookfield, um, they jumped uh, two steps. They gave me credit for the years that I worked there as part time. Oh, okay. So right now I have I have six weeks vacation right now. And one week. Um, wow. So it's it's just how the, the contract. Well, you signed the contract. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm at six, and uh, over there they max out at seven. So okay, but yeah, we're currently on that six weeks. Okay, and so if we didn't open the contract, then what would happen? You would, wouldn't. You would get nothing. Right. Okay. So, um, but we have to remain competitive. Yeah. With the police, it's hard getting police officers. It's hard getting experienced police officers. You had seven apply. Well, we had we called seven for interviews. Okay. And that had how many seven, applied? Yeah, how many? Uh, how many do you think we get off Indeed? Uh, there was about twenty-two. Yeah, nothing experience. It's and you called seven of them. You must just press a button and they come to us. Um, there was seven that had police experience. We called all seven that come for our interviews and. It's typical. A lot of people are fishing, but you know, mm -hmm. just seeing if they can options. And yeah, you know, it's hard. Hard hiring cops. Nobody wants to be cops anymore. You know. Yeah. So it's getting tough. So, do you think we're setting a bad precedent opening up the contract for um, one person? They're the only one that has a contract like that. Yeah. It's the only contract, so there's no precedent because they're the only ones that actually have a union and a collective bargaining agreement. Right. So no other town department does, right? Well, they, they follow the personnel bylaw. So um, whether it's contractual, uh, it's through the personnel bylaw, or contractual by you know position, or contractual by collective bargaining agreement. But they're the only ones that actually have that unique position to bargain on it. So if we open this up, can we put something in there to say that this next time would be at the discretion of the personnel board, select board? So again, you would have a vacation to, issue like this. You know, the wording would have to be, um, you know, bargained with approved uh, or whatever. Yeah. The, the yeah, patrol we bargaining would have gone up the chain. Right? Yeah. So that's something we can address that. Fix it so we don't have to do this. Right. To, to modify a contract, we could have a discretion on vacation time. Maybe make it a limit of two weeks or something. But well, for a new hire. Yeah, for a new hire. Honestly, I wouldn't jump from six weeks to go to no vacation yeah. time. And for a year. I mean, for a year. In this job, the stress you need. Yeah. Sometimes. It's not much enticement to get somebody to come over here. So did okay. So did anybody else that we hired recently on the force lose vacation so time? The last one we, we hired were like the end of the fiscal year toward towards the end. Okay. February, so March. In March. February. So um, they would be under the same policy. Right. But they were towards the end. So give them two weeks for June. You know what I mean? We wouldn't have done that. That's what we were okay. doing for the bargaining. Keep coming. Tail end of the fiscal year in March, June, or May, June. I can give you two weeks to do that. Yeah. Short period of time where coming in now or just starting the fiscal year. Yeah. Many time. Yeah, I just, I mean, I'm worried about other people thinking, well, that's not fair. I didn't get my, you know. Right, so that's why the union wrote that letter. Okay.
Mr. Chairman, yeah, thank you. I, I just want to uh, brief the board a little bit. Um, and I was involved in the, um, in the interview process. I thought Officer Bell did a fantastic job, and I think Officer Bell would be a great fit for our community, and I think he would um, be great for the department. I think he offers a lot of vast um, uh, experience and knowledge, and I think it would be great for the for um, the chief and the rest of the officers uh, to have that and to lean off of that. Um, I did write a letter uh, to the board cautioning about this practice. I, I'd like to read this into the record. Uh, this is a response to a request to process of filling the additional police officer position that was recently approved at the June 13th, 2024 annual town meeting. Although public safety remains a top priority, the proposed request being made by the police chief and the patrolman's union, I believe, sets a dangerous precedent for the town. Although the officer has five years of full-time experience in a neighboring community, the request of starting the officer at a step six on the pay scale and providing immediate access to two weeks paid vacation is inconsistent uh, with the already negotiated con patrolman's collective bargaining agreement and the town's personal bylaw which the collective bargaining agreement is mirrored from. This practice could have significant financial ramifications for the town in the future. The current collective bargaining agreement is set to expire on June 30th of 2025 and contract negotiations will be starting soon. Reopening and changing the current collective bargaining agreement is short-sighted and could cost the taxpayers of Warren a significant financial hardship. It is my hope that the officer can revisit this request and we can move forward. It is my obligation, responsibility, and duty to alert the board of my concerns before any official action is taken. I am sure my recommendation is disappointing. However, quite simply, that is the responsibility I was charged with when I accepted this position. It is my sincerest hope that a resolution can be reached. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm good with the proposal. I think it's good. It's hard to get police officers. It's a unique situation. Um, everybody's fighting over for officers and to get somebody that um, has experience, um, and especially as a local. Mm -hmm. and knows the police officers and is so supported by the union uh, and they're the ones that have the most to grieve about it and they're the ones supporting it the most um, I think it would cause a serious hardship um, losing somebody and having a short short shift if we lose somebody else and we don't have that person there to fill then it could cost us an overtime and we don't know what we're going to get next time so, you know, I thank you for that, but I respectfully disagree with that. Okay. Um, that's my opinion. And I think it's definitely something we could do here um, to get a good quality officer in our town because we worked hard to build a good police department and I want to see that still going forward. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize he was losing four weeks of vacation. So that's he's losing a lot to come here. Yeah, it almost doesn't seem fair. Mm -hmm. you know, I understand his reasons because I'm very well aware of what's going on in the neighboring town. Yeah, we, we spoke before. I, I remember. <laughs> and you know, I understand that, and I understand why we'd want, you would want to make the decision to move now. Um, but their loss is our gain. And you know, if they were in the same situation, they'd, they'd damn well poach our police officers from us. So. This is the, this is the time for right now. This is what they're offering. Right. We're signing bonuses. This town's getting signed bonuses. Yeah, we can't, we can't, can't do sign on bonuses <laughs> and can't do all that stuff. And there's just a lot of crazy yeah, stuff towns are doing. Can't we can't compete with Sturbridge in their pay because yep. they pay very well. Um, we're a small town, but giving somebody a couple weeks leave, and honestly, he's losing four weeks to come here. You know, and he's also taking a pay cut. So you, that's what he would start, and he has—he's going to have two weeks of vacation for the next. 
bunch of years, right? Until next year. Because what? Until next year. Contract, yeah. Because the contract it says when you get the extra week, how much time you have, you get the extra when they go up in time. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do other towns do? Do they do this sort of thing? Yes. This vacation yeah. bargaining kind of thing? Well, you know I, I can tell you, cause especially West Brookfield's looking to hire, and they're bringing in unilateral you know, years of service and matching pay and vacation with what the contract shows in West. Okay. Yeah, I love the time so they would be opening up their contract to hire somebody? Well, they probably already have the uh, there's uh, specifically the uh, chief's discretion for recommendation. Okay. Without having the exact verbiage, it's yeah, yeah, it's close to that. yeah. But it's the the spirit of it. Okay. All right. I mean, we certainly can't do signing bonuses either. So yeah, <laughs> we're kind of limited what we can, but what we can. Yeah. You know, it's not. He's not asking for the six weeks. To match it, yeah, that which, was, yeah, and he's not asking to get more money. He's actually taking a pay cut. Are you taking a pay cut? Oh, okay. That's step six. It's cut. Okay. But we have opportunity here. Yeah. A lot of it. Okay. Will the chair entertain some public comment on this? Sure. You have a comment? Frank Capaco, uh, citizen. I'm all in favor of Officer Bell joining the force, but I, I, I totally agree with what the town administrator had to say about this. And uh, my question is, is uh, well, I have several questions if you're willing to entertain them. Is would Officer Bell be losing anything? Would he would he be reimbursed for his current six weeks of vacation that are on that are that are available to him at Westbrook Field. What do you mean reimburse? Who would reimburse him? Who? The town. Us? On, on termination, no, no, no. On termination, would, wouldn't he get some or all of that accrued vacation time? From our town or no, Westbrook Field? West, West, from Westbrook Field. Oh, I, I have no clue what Westbrook Field would do. That's Westbrook Field. I can't speak for them. I, oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, do, do you know? Could, we, you? could we find out? Or? Uh, the way that it's written in the contract is I can either use the time or they would cash me out of it because it's my time. Okay. Um, it's not like I would come over here and say, I'm taking three weeks from Westbrook Field off here. It's I can use the time or they have to um, buy it back from me, basically. Okay. Okay. So, so I think that answers so the it, So the, the narrative that's being told right now is that he would lose four weeks of vacation time. And it doesn't sound like that's actually accurate. He could take four weeks of unpaid time after becoming an officer with Warren, and he could he'd, he'd have the money to cover that at a higher he'd have actually more money than he would get if he's getting that time in vacation here. So, so the that, part of it is next July only comes up, he's not going to have six weeks vacation. I, I, I understand, but any any new hire would be under that same. Uh, situation that's currently been negotiated and in the in the current contract the the uh, uh, I, I, I totally support the notion that that uh, that the union contract let alone the personnel bylaws that the town is under should be renegotiated to allow for a different vacation thing but that's kind of beside the point currently why does the select board have the authority to overrule a town bylaw, and, let alone a, a, a union contract. So I, I'm just talking about the town bylaw, which is perfectly union, clear. The union contract, we would have to go enter it into it again and renegotiate it no. for the request for the request of the union, which either party could request to open it up again and negotiate it a term, and we could do that. They're under a contract there. You have a collective bargaining agreement, so it allows for something like this versus the town bylaw, which we couldn't change the town bylaw. That would be a vote of the people. But this, right. is, I think the, this is a contract. Does the contract supersede the bylaw? Yes. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's what they're... they're I think they're, that's what they're, Ray's they're, question they're, is. They're, 
They're the, so the contract, contract and, and the, the bylaws, bylaws are separate, completely but they separate. mirror each other. So is the right. union so is the union hiring the candidate or is the town hiring the candidate? The town. Is the the town. union can support the request, the offer, mm -hmm. but they can't. They can't say he gets two weeks of vacation. You guys can do that. Right, the and that's their request of us. But to support that. Okay, but and it's a contract. You can't negotiate. You can't renegotiate the contract until it's time to renegotiate it. I'm, I'm just questioning. Who, uh, by what authority can you? For, can you? You're basically negating the existing contract by offering this two weeks of vacation. And it, my it, it, look at. You don't have to do that. You can hire him immediately and let him take two weeks or four weeks or six weeks at his discretion during the coming months, and he doesn't lose anything. He actually makes out if he wants to take six weeks of vacation because he would he's being reimbursed at the current his current rate, which is higher than his current rate here would be. It just means that he can't start immediately or the department will lose his services for some period of vacation time between now and next June. Next June, I understand, things could be reset, but that also you also have the time available to you because the contract can be renegotiated starting in January to be in effect for next June so that it could be worded in such a way that either the chief or the personnel board here in town can, at their discretion, grant vacation times, and you can put some limits or qualifiers on it or parameters to your liking. So there's no need for the offer to be inclusive of this two weeks of vacation, mostly not because there's anything against Officer Bell or the department in the least. I totally support his hiring. It's, it's kind of a no-brainer, as everyone's here mentioned. But you're setting a precedent. You may not like it. Is this truly an exceptional situation? I dare say it's not an exceptional situation. He may be an exceptional candidate, but it's not an exceptional situation. If he was scheduled to have surgery and he was going to be out for four weeks and could use his vacation time, and by coming here he'd have to forego that and be without pay, that would be an exceptional situation. I'd be much more lenient. I, I, I'd still have problems because you're basically effectively overruling an existing contract that's not provided for, that all the more reason why the personnel bylaw and the union contract should be renegotiated. Obviously, you don't renegotiate the personnel bylaw. That has to go for a town meeting and all that stuff. But I think my point's been made. The offer, in my recommendation, should be amended to the step six. <clears throat> it should not include any vacation granting. Thereby, you don't even begin to set a precedent. You're honoring the existing contract, and the officer is not out that time. Now, if the, if the chief didn't want to give him the time off, that's a different issue. I'm just saying from the town's perspective, there's no reason to grant this to him. It opens up a can of worms. It sets a precedent that's very bad. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I still support point. I mean, He has a valid point, but I still support the request. Um, I think it's fair. It's, you know, he's leaving another town. He is losing pay. He's a very well-qualified candidate. We're not, we don't have... We don't have 200 people knocking on our doors requesting jobs that are quality candidates. Mm -hmm. you know? If I could, that's with all due respect. Yes, sir. Uh, from my understanding and reading the union letter, I understand the concerns of setting that precedent. The union's already spoken on that. Yes. They've said that the contract will be opened up in January. They said this is the one time thing. All voting, paying union dues members have said they have no concern. So the contract is going up, from my understanding, will be opened up in January anyway, and this would be the precedent for the one collective bargaining contract. So I don't understand, or, or I would respectfully disagree, that there is no precedent because this is the one time. Right. And any contract can be opened up. Yes. So. Yeah, and that's the thing. At any point, either party can request to renegotiate the contract and open it up or yeah, support something yes. of it. Yeah. Um, so that can be done. You don't have to wait to the expiration of the contract because there are situations where you can run into where 
something in the contract might be contrary to um, practices that are happening or something that might need to be corrected and you can request to negotiate that and open it up. It's up to both parties to accept that and say, okay, we, we want to, or no, we're not going to. That's up to both parties to do. Um, but, you know, I feel the request is, is reasonable. It's supported by the union. We get a good quality person. Um, you know, I, I don't have any issue. I don't think it's cart creek in a, uh, uh, you know, any type of standard or any measure for others to go to because they're very unique. The, you know, the police department's the only one that has a collective bargaining agreement, and this is the only time we'll be in this situation. It's not like, you know, between employees in the town hall or fire department or anybody else. So, I think it's unique. Um, and again, we don't have a lot of opportunities for people. Chief, what's been your rate of turnover in the past maybe two years? Just from February, we lost three. Three, yeah. Okay. That's just this year. So just because you hire somebody doesn't mean they stay, right? But all positions are currently filled. Right, right. Yeah. But I'm just, I mean, somebody could quit two weeks from yeah. now, you know? And yeah. you went through that where back to back in yeah. January and you would end up January to February. It takes two weeks to quit the job and how long to hire? How long does it take? <laughs> well, we were, uh, for this it was three weeks. We were close to three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, this was a relatively quick process for this one. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we had it out there for two weeks and third week I think we had interviews and now we're here tonight, so it was pretty quick, this one. But that's not typical. Well, not typical, no. It's a, it's a gamble. Yeah. Officer Bell, are you interested in staying on the Warren Force for a while? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. There's, uh, there's potential in speaking with Chief Millette. There's opportunities coming. Um, I know there's opportunities from the town. Uh, I, I have no plans. I like to get comfortable. Okay. Is there and you were with West Brookfield for a few years. Five full time. I started in 2019. What yes. is there a financial budgetary impact? I guess either of you could answer this to, to these two weeks of vacation. For me, no. Okay. I figure out the salary for the year. So okay. No, so there's no hit. No. Negative it's impact. Air. I mean, it's sort of factored yeah, in. Yeah, he's on the midnight shift, which wouldn't be back to either. Okay. What do you mean? So you need a person on midnight? So when we did the, uh, we got the next guy, it puts two people on the midnight now. So when one of them takes it off, we won't, we won't know it. So we you don't have to hire overtime. Because then it would be overtime. Then I would. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so now actually, you we're have saving money. Right, so now you have a person right. to fill so right that now spot. On the days that there's only one person scheduled, they take the day off until time. Where the new position, the, the two guys on, somebody takes the day off and we create overtime. Okay. And overtime means up budget. Yeah. Plus it burns up the guys when you decide to too much overtime. Right. I think it's reasonable. I don't think it's creating a precedent. You know, yeah, it's unique. Um, I think I'm good with it. so. There's an opportunity to bring on somebody who's good. It doesn't seem like there's a financial impact. I think the issue with the contract is potentially negative. I'm not sure though that. It seems like it may or may not be. It's hard to say. Um, and I think we need to think about the next one, how to handle this better. Um, we got to make the contract a little more competitive, but that's up to yeah. the negotiations, and that's up to the police union to bring up and present their 
their list of things that they would like to see um, changes and whether we can support that or not. And that's how a negotiation goes. So we are, I mean, the other thing is somebody else could bring this up that's under the personnel bylaws. I don't know if they have. But they're not covered under the personnel. That's different. No, but I mean a, another town employee, highway, fire, you but know, But then they're assessor. covered by the personnel bylaws. Right. Well, I know, I know, but yeah, but they could that has, say, That would you know, require a town vote. Yeah, it would, yeah. We can't even touch that. No. So. I mean, in a way, this is easier because you can open this up. Right. The other way, you can adjust. Um, once a year, you can deal with it with the uh, bylaw. Good. I think so. Yeah. What do you want to do? All right. I'll make a motion. I think, like I said, I think ov the overall it balances out to a positive. It's definitely got some negative aspects, but. All right, so I'll make a motion to appoint John V. Bell as a full-time police officer at step six. Um, so I can't make a motion to grant him access. We have to open up the contract. Um, we well, the I, I guess you have a letter here from the Patrolman's Union saying that they're not going to grieve it. Um, I, I'm guessing that that's what their intent of this letter is. Um, and so with them giving the okay of it, uh, then I guess it could be uh, written in uh, if the board so chooses that uh, he would be granted two weeks. Okay, so I'll say, and to amend the patrolman's contract to give him access to two weeks paid vacation upon starting. Okay. I'll second it. All in favor? Rich I. Hucker, aye. David Dufresne, I. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Congratulations, Congratulations. sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, don't touch the camera. Yeah, that's very tricky. And welcome to Warren. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next thing is discussion of the possible appointment of James uh, Lindro, Lindro as a full-time driver and laborer for the highway department and to start him as a step one on PW2 on the wage scale. Anticipated vote. Okay. How you doing, sir? Good. How about you guys? Good. <laughs> you almost got my name correct, almost, but it's How? Leandro. 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 Portuguese Leandro. Okay. Sorry about that. That's no, so, okay. Trust me, I've gotten that killed a lot of times over my lifetime. So they they good. mess up my name all the time, so, too. You see I that? You see that, yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to make an attempt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, do you want to introduce yourself to Yes. Us? Well, my name's James Leandro. I'm from the town of Lotto, uh, class of 92, Lotto Lions. I have a daughter that's 19 years old. I was once married. I'll never do that again. I am <laughs> dating. I have been in a relationship for off and on for about 15 years. Okay. Um, I have some experience from the city of Chicopee in the highway department and also the forestry department. Um, I've been in transportation in the office from dispatching routing to you know driving trucks, all types of vehicles from roll ops to triaxles, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I have experience in the highway department. I wanted to get back uh, into a town, not so much a city. There's more advancement opportunities to grow in the smaller towns, especially like a town that's being run correctly like Warren is. So I watched Ludlow grow up and boom and blow up over my lifetime in the town. So I know that there's possibilities. I just forget that Ludlow is a different county and mm -hmm. you guys are located in Worcester County. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's more potential also too because it's Worcester County, it's a bigger area. So. You know, so I saw it in D, I applied, and I guess I was against a couple other candidates, and I'm right here in front of you saying that I want the job. Very good, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Do you have any questions for me? No, I don't. We can okay. put Jeremy Mr. Ferrari, do you have um, I, I just want to say that uh, myself and, and Jeremy Olson uh, interviewed uh, James. Great candidate. Um, I had some 
tremendous experience, has a CDL license, um, has a uh, Mass DOT uh, certification, um, is, um, is experienced. Uh, we feel as though that he'll be a good fit for the department. Uh, and he's really excited about working for the town of Warren. I know that, I think Jeremy's on Zoom. Yep. Yep, yep. there he is. Hello. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing, sir? Oh, what happened? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. I lost, I lost you. you. can see you. Yep, we can he hear you and see you. Can you oh, hear us? I lost everybody. Oh, boy. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. yep. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say I'm very excited to bring James on. Again, a guy with great experience. Uh, you know, I, I spoke with one of his former bosses, had nothing but great things to say about him. You know, uh, very interested in learning and advancing himself and uh, has the right attitude that we're looking for to uh, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll get comfortable and stay here in Warren with us for many years to come. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's getting comfortable staying in Warren for a few years. Absolutely. All right. That's <laughs> absolutely the goal. All right. I know there's room of advancements and opportunities. I was one of the I was looking at. Also, too, I was also applying for this position as I sat down with Jeremy and we talked in the interview along with James. Jeremy's excellent. He is. So I, I, Good I, man. I've yeah. heard from several people that he is the man. So. Yeah. Yeah. If that helps me in any case. <laughs> <laughs> it might. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have nothing, then nope, let's I'm, do it. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to appoint James Leandro as a full-time driver slash laborer for the highway department and start him at a step one in the PW2 chart. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor. Rich I. Hawker, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, sir. Right. Welcome, Welcome aboard. I'm very excited. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. I'll see you gentlemen on the streets. And yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see you on the streets. Now, James and, and Jeremy, we got to get him sworn in. Um, we got a yep. swearing uh, uh, certificate, so we'll get him sworn in, and he'll be uh, ready to go on, on Monday. Uh, Tuesday. 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 Yeah, Monday's a holiday. Tuesday. Yeah, you can have Monday off. That's okay. good. <laughs> I'm all set now. You're all set. You're all set. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Later. We can sign right now. Get him done. Jeremy, everything came back. Everything's clear. Well, the so third we can start one, Tuesday. Excellent. Great, great news. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll just wait until. Yeah, the third one we See get you. to kind of direct, talk about. Oh, okay. Do you want to just do Bell then? Yep. Bell and. and um, Bell. Okay, next, next thing on the agenda is discussion and possible appointment of Roger Gagnon on an on-call part-time driver laborer for the highway department for the purpose of sharing hours within the same part-time category already established and to start him at step minimum with pay, um, PW2 on the wage scale anticipated vote. Okay, now with this one, sir, um, is this even a position we have? So um, I, I talked with Jeremy about this, and Jeremy envisions that this position um, is going to be shared with it's an, in his existing position, and he's going to share some of the hours that the person that currently holds this position um, doesn't always take. So the position is 19 hours. Um, the current uh, uh, incumbent of that position doesn't use all 19 hours. So Jeremy would like to, you know, have the ability to uh, put somebody in there to use um, a portion of the hours that hasn't been used. So if there's, you know, okay. if there's five hours left over of the 19 that has not been used, then, you know, he could potentially call uh, this gentleman in uh, to do some additional work. This is a this is very similar to what we did uh, creatively uh, with uh, part-time position, uh, uh, also at a um, on a PW1. 
we have two individuals that share that part-time position. So this is a, this is a this is a part-time position that was approved at town meeting some time ago, but the person that occupies this uh, part-time position doesn't use all of the hours. So Jeremy would like to have some flexibility of using uh, some of these hours. The initial request was to use some of the hours from a full-time person, uh, but that can't be done. This could be allowed because it's a part-time person. It was approved. Um, and it's already existing. Okay. All right. And it's just I didn't know if we had a Jeremy. Correct me if I'm wrong. For this. No, you're exactly right. It's uh, unfortunately our part timer that that holds that position. He also runs a local farm. He sometimes is available and sometimes he's not. This time of year, we have a very large number of construction projects going on and I always need a truck driver. I always need somebody to jump in that dump truck and keep the job moving. And this gentleman, uh, Rogers, come, comes from us through, uh, he's a town resident of Warren, but has worked for the town of Brimfield for a long, long time, actually retired from them recently. He still holds a part-time spot for them, comes back once in a while. He's willing to come help his own town, his own highway department, and uh, play a role to help fill that, that void that I need when I have these extra projects going on and I'm missing a guy. So it, this, gives the, this position is flexible to begin with, and this here gives me so much more flexibility being able to utilize two different people to fill that time slot where, where one person isn't unable, you know, isn't able to really be there all the time this time of year. And to me, that is, you know, this is valuable. This is construction season. So he saves us a lot of money not hiring out a truck. Let's put it that way. I like saving money. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have anything? Uh, seems like a no brainer to me. Mr. Gagnon is here in the audience. How you doing, sir? Did you want to say anything? Oh, he said it. He said it very well. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> you got a good person there. All right. Um, you have nothing? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Uh, to appoint Roger Gagnon as an on-call part-time driver slash labor for the highway department and starting at the minimum step under PW2. I'll second it. All in favor? Rich I. Hucker, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. And welcome to the town, sir. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome, Jeremy. Jeremy, you're vacation, Jeremy. Oh, oh is he on vacation? Oh, boy. <laughs> Rub it in. Rub it sure in. you are. All right, next thing on the agenda, uh, distribution of a proposed right to farm bylaw sponsored by the Board of Health. Discussion shall take place at the next meeting. So the Board of Health has their right to farm? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the, uh, this uh, proposed bylaw was given back to me uh, uh, some time ago by the Board of Health. Um, they would like to see this get on to a town meeting. Uh, so, uh, with everybody's vacation and everything, I wanted to, you know, make sure the board has a copy of it. They could review it, and then maybe we could discuss it at our next meeting. Okay. Have you guys ran this or talked to? They haven't talked to any council or anything yet. Well, not just council, but have they discussed this with um, the? The farm inspector, animal inspector? That I'm not aware of. Okay. You might want to reach out to her. Okay. Make sure she gets a copy of this. Sure. Because she's the one that's going to be out here doing all yeah, this right, work. Right, right. Yeah. So you might want to give her a hint mm -hmm. if you're going to come out here with this stuff. So, so uh, can we discuss this now? Or we... I'm, yeah. My question would be, like, is there a minimum size of the operation so if i have one chicken am i a farmer well that's where we would need right to i mean discuss more because there's a lot of there's a lot of harvey um, hobby farmers 
and they ha only have a couple chickens in their yard. I think where this is coming from is all the disputes with roosters and roosters being such an issue. But see, I don't know, I sort of feel like in the village, right, where everybody's crammed together, maybe right. roosters aren't such a great idea. But They're if you're out not. in rural, roosters are great. I don't know, but... I have four roosters. Yeah, but you're... So, yeah, but... You, but there's nobody in the hair. So. You have dinosaurs, too, out there. I, mean, I probably do somewhere. Yeah. Bigfoot. <laughs> but my house, you know, I don't know. I'm, you know... Yeah. I'm well, a, I'm right on the border of village versus rural, and I wouldn't mind having... Well, we do have roosters right around the corner from us. And it, to me, it's fine. So, right, but if your neighbor doesn't think it's fine... And I think what you were saying... There's cases where there's been Rogers Dairy Farm forever, right? And then all of a sudden, a subdivision goes up next to it. People complain, and now they want the um, his farm shut down. Let's say. Mm -hmm. I would think well, I that's think this what is, this is to this protect. This is designed to protect that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, or at least in theory, it's supposed to. Yeah. And but his is a huge difference between that and me buying a chicken and or a rooster, right? I mean, he has an established business. Well, anybody can stop there. at Tractor Supply and grab a bunch of chickens and go home and yeah, I'm a you know, throw now. them in their yard yeah. and here we go. And then realize, believe me, we get a lot of adoptions that way because people don't realize how much work chickens are. Or they don't no, realize yeah. that when they bought their chickens that they got three roosters in the batch oh, right. and two hens. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that causes problems. Right. And nobody wants roosters because they're mean. They're roosters. And does this take away, see, that's why I was thinking, like some sort of minimum size or type of operation? Because it, does it take well, I away? I think this is opening up the conversation that we could have with them. This is their first step yeah. saying, hey, we're proposing this to you. Let's talk about it. Yeah. But you really also need to, you need to get the, the animal inspector involved. Mm -hmm. See, um, I, I wasn't sure if it was the animal inspector because they don't mention the animal inspector. They, in, they mention an agricultural commissions. Yeah. So I'm not sure if, they, if they're proposing. Well, she's the uh, one going out and yeah. doing the barn inspections and all these farm yeah. inspections. I wasn't sure if they were proposing like a new Because that's by the position. state. Well, that's oh. a state requirement is to do the farm inspections. So we'd have to just change this language to say like commission or animal uh, farm inspector or animal inspector. But you got to remember, you got to be dumping how many hobby farmers would get brought into this. Yeah, but doesn't she have to do those anyway? She has to do that. Um, so I don't know if it in, wouldn't increase her work. You know, because right? technically if you own one chicken, she's supposed to look and make sure that it has water and has food yeah. and shelter for it. Um, and that's that's her thing. I don't get involved in that, but I think you know it definitely should be brought to her so people can talk to her about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, this is for for you guys to look at it, yep. dissect it for a week. Next meeting, we could you know invite the board of health, the animal inspector, to come to yeah. give some testimony on it. it. You know, have the board of health explain their position on this. And then see, you know, what you know type of changes or modifications need to be made. So I better go get my chickens faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Anything else? You good? No. Cool. They're opening up the conversation. I noticed West Brookfield actually has all their signs up right to farm community now. Mm -hmm. too. So they switched. Oh, did it? Yeah. Can we, um, well, I wonder if they got a copy of that one and to model this or... And I think well, this I kind of ask. protects the farmers, like you were saying before, and you were saying, that um, somebody moves in and you have a farm, now they're complaining. It's like, well, no, they have the right to be able to do that here in this community. Mm -hmm. But it also put, puts control measures on what they can do, Yeah, which some people might not like. So. All right. So
So next thing, warrants and bills, anticipated votes. All right, make a motion to pay the following warrants. PRO 7, $53,373.20. PRO 8, $51,829.25. APO 8, $400,246.71. APO 9, $37,002.69. I'll second that. All in favor? Rich I. Hacker, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, make bills. the motion to pay the following bills. KP Law, $1,894.03. Modern Pest, $108. Masters Telecom, $93.43. National Grid, $203.35. Quill, $1,263.70. Kelco, $481.12. SBA, $1,753.85. Hamden Communications Corp., uh, $1,500. Heron Talks, what was that? 25 that's the speaker, professional speaker. Oh, yeah, that's right. $2,532.50. I'll second it. All in favor? Rich I. Hacker, aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the August 15th minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Which I hacker aye. David Dufresne, aye. The motion passes unanimously. Town Administrator Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, in your packets this evening um, is the first um, report uh, from Entree Technologies uh, about our life cycle report. We'll be getting one of these reports every month um, going over um, all our hardware um, and some areas in which we need to uh, keep an eye on um, for updating our hardware. Okay, As you can see, time. we have uh, numerous devices yeah. um, that Close are, early. you know, uh, greater than uh, seven to eight years old, some of them. Um, some of them are 10 years old. Um, you know, these are the reports and the information that we're going to use when it comes time to um, attack, um, you know, replacing uh, some of this uh, equipment and infrastructure. Um, we're going to use um, um, their um, knowledge and, and their approach to addressing uh, the need of these of these devices. Obviously, the older the device, um, uh, those those will priority. be tackled priority. Um, you know, there's some that will. Um, some of these devices will not support Windows 11 uh, in the future. Um, so there so are those pose a risk to security then? Propose risk to security. I would say most of these don't support Windows 11. Right. <laughs> so um, there's, um, there's this report. Um, we're, we're, we're closely oh monitoring it. I'm closely monitoring it. Um, there's, um, like I said, we have money put aside, reserved from town meeting uh, to address these. Uh, uh, concerns. Um, I'm currently working with Entree to get some pricing on um, uh, the outright purchase versus lease so I can bring that to the board uh, for some comparison analysis uh, and to get some direction from the board as to how they would like to proceed with that. Uh, and I should have that within the next few weeks. Um, I've asked Entree to start compiling um, that financial information um, uh, right now uh, and we're still waiting on whether or not we're going to get a potential grant uh, from um, uh, from the state on, on you know technology um, and it, there's a there's a strong possibility that we could uh, if that's the case um, then um, then obviously with some of the money that we had reserved for uh, at town meeting we won't need to access all of it um, and that's a good thing um, so that's one, one report there. The other report that you will also be seeing from Entree, um, I will uh, bring out, is the cybersecurity uh, report. They are configuring that, um, and they will have one ready for next month, um, and um, working closely with them. This week, um, we had a very busy week. We had a, uh, a job, uh, we had a candidate come in for an interview for uh, the position at the wastewater treatment plant. That particular candidate holds a class three license. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, we are currently um, uh, also gonna be interviewing a couple other candidates as well. Um, so 
you know, we're moving along in that process to, to fill that vacancy down there in the uh, sewer department, critical vacancy. Um, so we're, we're very hopeful that we can uh, have somebody soon. Um, I've also worked with the planning board uh, on filling uh, the, um, the vacancy in the building and planning department. Um, we had a, um, a committee put together uh, uh, looking at um, internal, uh, um, you know, uh, internal a committee put together looking at of all the um, applicants, and we had uh, three finalists uh, for the position, and um, one clearly emerged, and uh, I'm going to be bringing that person's uh, name forward at our next meeting, hopefully. Um, uh, she has conditionally accepted the position, um, and, um, and, and the, the internal committee has agreed that that was the, the best candidate, although all three candidates were outstanding uh, and would benefit the town in some way, shape, or form. Um, but this one stood out uh, by the committee, and we're, we're very hopeful that um, we can um, get this process uh, wrapped up within the next week or two. Very good. Um, so, um, I do want to thank Karen for helping out uh, and stepping up uh, for the planning board um, in, in taking uh, those minute, meeting minutes at night and in, in working those things. So uh, it was greatly appreciated. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Um, and I also want to uh, let the board know of some great news that I just got this afternoon, just this afternoon, from the Department of Energy and Resources. We were very successful, and we were awarded a $201,000 grant from the Department of Energy Resources today. Awesome. And that's going to take care of $100,000 uh, plus of a senior center heat pump, um, senior center weatherization of uh, over $20,000, $67,000 spent right here in this building right here in, in, in weatherization. Those, that money that is going to be spent in these two buildings, not only is it going to make improvements to those two buildings, but it's also going to save money. Yeah. The weatherization is key uh, to saving energy costs. And these, this grant, and we, we were strategic of how we went, went after it in, in working um, with um, our uh, partners over at, um, at, at Collins uh, um, uh, Community uh, Electric. Uh, and and also working with a CMRPC, um, you know, uh, was very um, was very helpful. And so we worked very critically at those two buildings, and we were able to get it. I was I was hoping that we got it, and, and we got the news just this afternoon, just today. Wow. So for the senior center, the heat pump, we're talking about uh, mini splits. Yes. So that's air conditioning too. Yes. So. Yes. So that That's whole unit, resolve our problems that whole unit is going to be ripped out of there. How soon? Get it done tomorrow. <laughs> Get it done. Well, call. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I certainly can. Um, Just let him know. We got it. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. But we have the money. We'll be able to do it. Yeah. So it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. I know he's frustrated, yeah. but look, we, you know, you're we working have, as hard as you can to we get. We have, it done. Um, you know, it's we got these grants. The next big piece is going to be trying to administer them and, and get every all the pieces together yeah. and get everybody going and get all the all the all the construction. Are you wasting time talking to us about it. <laughs> yeah, you can. Getting all the construction going. So there is going to be a little bit of an inconvenience, obviously, at the senior center uh, with with crews working down there, uh, you know, and obviously here with crews working in weatherization. So. There'll be some inconveniences. But um, it's going to be so much yeah, more comfortable for them yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like School Street. It, it's tough to deal with, but when it's done, it's going to look great. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So Thank we, you, sir. yep, we have that, and then uh, also, um, you know, we're 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 working on um, uh, wrapping up, you know, School Street, and uh, Rich was mentioning School Street, um, and. Um, you know, there is uh, quite a bit of work that has been done over there already. Uh, Jeremy is working with um, his crews and in, 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 in getting um, the street, you know, paved, um, and that's going to be done this fall. Um, and so there are some touch-up work that's been going on with the contractor 
over there uh, in anticipation of it getting paved. But we're hoping that this project, uh, besides a small punch list of items, uh, can be wrapped up uh, significantly this fall. Um, and so substantially this fall. Um, so there are some, some things that we're working on over there. Um, I will also let the board know that uh, we are also, uh, you know, looking at, um, at uh, our quality of life stuff. You know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm working with departments and in, in, in everything uh, to address quality of life, problem properties. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I want to work especially with the police department now that they have a new officer to get a quality of life maybe officer that can work with you know handling some of these nuisance complaints and different things and putting a little bit more teeth and pressure uh, to clean up some of these uh, uh, properties are, are, are very so important. That brings up the same issue is the fees and the fines were brought up previously <coughs> that they are not yeah. uh, they may not be enough to be able to deter mm -hmm. certain behavior. Or even non-existent. And, or non-existent. And we definitely need the police department to make the recommendations of what the fees should be that are appropriate so we can address that. Yeah, we just did that with the parking tickets. Yep. Yep. So uh, I mentioned it to all department heads at the department head meeting uh, that we had last week. Uh, I said, you know, take a look at our bylaws. If you feel as though that our bylaw is weak in, 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 in an area with dealing with problem properties, quality of life issues, uh, let me know. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's, let's start the communication piece um, in trying to work through the departments uh, to try to get that done. And I think that, um, you know, there was a lot of people in, from the department head aspects that were receptive that say, yeah, we need to clean up some of these, some of these issues and some of these properties, um, and it's just one small step at a time that we can tackle these things and get these things moving. Very good. Anything else, sir? So, I got a question yes. or a comment. So I'm kind of horrified at the age of these computers. So the accountant and the treasurer are both working with computers that are like five years old. Yeah. Um, or it was maybe it was longer than that. Um, we have to get out of this cycle. Right. We can't have 10, 10 right. year old computers because they're just, the vulnerabilities are too much. It's now. endless, endless vulnerabilities. Yeah. And, and none of these, there's only one Windows 11 computer on here. Anything that's over four, five years ish can't be upgraded, which is like most of this list. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first of all, I'm a little disappointed. I like Northeast IT, but like, what the hell? That's happened? exactly what I said. <laughs> I mean, this is like a serious drop the ball thing. Well, it's good to have a little bit of change and stir it up a little bit. I guess bit so. And say, hey, yeah. let's have some fresh eyes looking at this. So the other thing, again, I've talked about it a few times, is let, let's look at leasing. Mm -hmm. So we're forced to get rid of these computers because this is what happens. Ah, uh, it'll go another year. It'll go another year, and all of a sudden you have a ten-year-old computer. We don't have the money for that. Right just now. waiting to get like attacked by something, some malware. So it may be more expensive to lease. I don't know, but at least we can cycle the old stuff out and keep everything. We have to do this. I mean, we can't. Well, I mean, ten years ago, this was fine. It's like the printers. You know, but yeah, same cycling thing. Cycling those out. Those are leased now and. How, look how bad they were. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've Adam sat there like and had to keep on redoing stuff and pulling it out and yeah. clearing the jams. I so think like, Adam had a 20 year old co uh, copier or something. I mean, at least Bob Marley? Yeah, yeah, Bob, yeah Bob Marley, yeah. You miss it? Always <laughs> jamming. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's, that's my comment. I just I think we, we, we have to get out of this cycle. You know? I think it, the copier thing, since you said it, the, price, the money I spent in ink because yeah yeah you submit something to court it's three copies yeah for the court's ten pages that's thirty copies and right so just I mean we ran out a couple times and they send it for free yeah well I think you have the same copier I do so if you oh, yeah. do yeah if you do I always have extra oh do you 
I make sure that I have at least one extra before I even start. But it doesn't matter. matter. All he has to do is call them, right? I know, yeah. but sometimes on my Magenta, they were back ordered, oh, and they okay. ended well, up having to okay. buy it through Amazon and ship it to me. Yeah. Because okay. I was out. I mean, so it, that's why I have extra. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. All right, well, this is encouraging with these yeah. with entree, then. I guess this is good. If this is what we're going to get, and they're going to be on top of this. And it looks like they came up with a schedule of replacement. Yep. Right? So, I mean, that's a big thing, too, is now, you know, you have this goal. Mm -hmm. Let's get these seven and six and six and six, right? Get right. them out of here. Yeah. Just, you know, you know, taking them off the list. And, yeah. Um, you know, in organizing our stuff. And that, that was... One of the struggles that that I had, and I, I agree with you, Rich. Uh, you know, Northeast IT was a great company, but I, I just needed something, somebody that was going to organize our stuff a little bit better and keep us on on tabs of you know dates and times and stuff yeah. like that. And these guys are doing it for less money, right? Yeah. Currently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is worth. If Northeast IT, we're getting a better this. product for less money. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, if, <laughs> right now, we may have to switch to another company in a few years. Right, right. But you know, it, well, and, and I, that's, I'm happy to pay somebody a lot of money if they do a good job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, but if we can get it I less mean, from somebody else well, to I, do the same job, I, I, yeah, totally. But you know, mm -hmm. that's I mean, that's why you know, there's a there's a plus to using the state contract, you know, these are already negotiated yeah, terms, yeah. Um, you know, and there's a plus to, to that and an advantage to that. So um, I'm happy that so far, so good, uh, it's been working out, um, and we'll see. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Nick, you have any answer? I don't. He, I will mention to the board, uh, Jeff Blake did confirm um, for a, um, uh, an executive session on the 26th. For Good. Us. Perfect. Twenty sixth. On the twenty sixth. Twenty sixth of September. You're thinking of the one on Monday, the sixteenth. Do, do, do. Okay. What was so? What's the? Can you say? Yep. Yeah, for the to, to deal, dealing with uh, town chimes. Oh. Okay. All right. September twenty sixth. Yep. Mm -hmm. What time? Five o'clock. Is that what he confirmed, Jeff? I just want to make sure that's what he said. Okay. Get in there. Executive session. Five on the twenty-six. Yep. Anything else? All right. Um, any new business? Old business? No, I think so. Um, the speed sign <coughs> up at Rogers Farm. I'm getting tired of driving by that thing and it not working. Ah, don't worry, he's gonna hit it tomorrow. He was out. What do you mean he's gonna hit it? Well, not hit it. He's gonna oh, put the That's how you make these things work. Like that. <laughs> Walk over and whack it with Ow. a hammer. Not to give the secrets away, but it does work when it's not showing. For a period of time. Yeah, but just not deterring people because I, I drove I was driving by there today and there was somebody in front of me and they probably were going about 45, 50 miles an hour because they left me in the dust and I was only doing 35. Right past Will. Yeah, he's, he was out and then we've been running one guy because vacation and usually steal his truck for the ladder. We don't want to get caught with the fire truck if the call comes in. Mm. Because he has the nice truck now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he must be far away. He's a nice guy. Where's it? Goes where all the parts. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if it could stop working again. So we could keep it working. Not a problem. We can handle that. And then probably traffic enforcement over there on those special oh, days. You're following up with that. Mm -hmm. Um, lines. 
for the roads? So I had a conversation with Jeremy, um, and Jeremy would like to use some Chapter 90 money to address uh, the painting of the lines. He feels as though that um, he needs to bring in a, uh, a, an outside vendor to handle the painting of the lines, um, and he's going to be doing that. Okay. Very good. When? Uh, he didn't give me a specific date, but he <coughs> said, um, you know, he's, he's hoping to get it done sometime this fall. Once it starts snowing, there ain't, it ain't happening. Yeah. Yeah. And what temperature does it have to be? Above freezing. I think it has to be, the ground has to be above freezing. So you get a little bit of time, but that clock, clock is ticking. So. Mm. But I did have a conversation with him about that. Just in the future, we need to make sure that gets addressed whenever we do these paving projects, that we write in there that the lines are being replaced also. Because mm -hmm. um, we don't want to pose a danger, like removing stop sign, the lines, the stop lines, mm -hmm. and you know, dividing the dividing lines between the roads. Yeah. We want to make sure those get put right back. Do you have any more business? No. All right. Uh, correspondence letter from the building inspector praising the fire departments and the police department. So we got a letter from the building inspector, and he was very happy that um, on an incident on August 6, 2024, at 3.30 p.m., involving a tree over... Oh, do you remember that? Yeah, in the, uh, yeah, we had a tree come down on a on a, on a, module, a mobile home in one of the uh, mobile home parks in town. Yes. So he was very happy that you guys assisted. And, um, there's a nice letter here, and I don't know if you gave that to them yet. No, it, it was sent directly to the select board. So I. Okay. I'll make a copy for him. Yeah, if you can make sure they get it, because it's nice that you know they went through everything, and. Um, I don't know if you want to read it out loud. I'm tired. <laughs> Do we need to read it? Yeah. It'll be on the website. Nice. Yeah, post it. Okay. It'll be on the website. But um, you know, it's great to see that other departments and the you know the building inspector is taking notice and the great job that you guys are doing and helping. And you know, who's also signed by the electrical inspector too? Yep. So Scott and Bill both signed it. Good job, guys. Okay. Um, next thing is a correspondence uh, email from Mr. Jeff Tripp about the vegetation hanging over the sidewalks. Uh, that was sent to Highway Department. Highway Department addressed it. And also, um, we had some pictures present, and it appears it's state property. Yes. It is. It's clear. That's what state. Jeremy is, is saying. State state no, property. I'll tell you what. One of those pictures, you can see the back of the sign that says "State Highway Begins." So this is State Highway. Oh, does right it? Here. Yep. So I will show Do you. You want to bring it up? Right there. Um, I can bring it up. I think. Yep. Right, the one that has a stop sign, and then the next sign is State Highway. It's the back side of it. Yep. Okay. I right, don't know how you. I'm going to blow this up, but uh, let's see. You can also tell the way the road is painted. Excuse me.
second one's a better picture than the first one. This one. Yeah, but we're trying to find the sign. Yeah, that's right. Oh, for Zero. God's sakes. Okay, whatever. Um, this is taking way more time than it needs to be. Can I hold it up to the camera? Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, right, yeah. the sign is right here. Yeah, Yeah. right there. That's the back of the sign. It says State Highway Begins. And you can see it in... So basically, it's right... I would say the border is probably like East Road. That's the dividing... It is. Line between town and state. Um, and frankly, I don't... I don't really see well, the sidewalk being no, I don't obstructed. Either. It's not like it's... No. You could easily walk through there. Probably people should maintain their bushes a little better. Yeah, it's more like a property owner issue. I don't even know that the state would even touch this. Yeah. I mean, it's not on the sidewalk, right? Right. And I think that's what Jeremy said in that first letter, yeah. the very first letter. Yeah, I understand, you know, but maybe maybe a bylaw or something could be proposed someday, and, you know, telling people that they need to be able to trim their bushes back away from the sidewalk. I don't think we don't have anything right now, do we? I'm not aware of anything. Not findable. I know there's that other one. There, there was an issue, it might be, and it was only a five dollar fine. Yeah, if, if there is a fine, it's minimum. It's like yeah. whatever. Yeah. Probably we got something we have to address here. Future, like you say, quality of life issues. But I. But there again, if this. I don't really see too much of an issue with no, that. I don't either. And again, it's not. Something we can really do anything right, about anyway. So. Right. <clears throat> so I, I don't know if you want to respond back to Mr. Tripp. Sure. sure. And just let him know that, you know, it's been identified as state property and if he wants that taken care of, you would need to notify them okay. um, for that to be handled. You know, we got enough of our own stuff to do. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, comments and concerns. Do you have any comments and concerns, sir? I do not. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Rowe? Yeah, I do. Anybody from the public? Comment and concern? Mr. Condrat? Joe Condrat, resident. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, I've been under extreme stress. I will intentionally focus my mind on a more civic agenda. And I know you experienced a, a loss in your family, and we're very sorry for that loss. And our condolences go out to you and your family. And we're here if you have anything to anything, sir. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have any comments or concerns? No? Anybody on Zoom? Comments or concerns? Is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, Besides us? Mac 2-3 or something like that. No. Okay. All right, no comments or concerns. Moving on. Next meeting is September 5th, 2024 at 6 p.m. That is September 5th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Rich Hawker, aye. David Dufresne, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.